Hello once again, ladies and gentlemen. This is case study number 32, a child with a fever and a rash. Very, very common, and I plan on doing more cases like this. So this is case number one uh, for a child with a fever and a rash. If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking on the I button on the upper right-hand corner or the link in the description of the video. I really appreciate all the contributions I can get and uh, all those of you who have stepped up to help offset the cost of these videos. I very much appreciate it. So thank you very much in advance. We got a three-year-old white girl coming into the ED with her mom complaining of a fever for the last six days, so a long-standing fever. Mom says that she called urgent care when the fever started, and she was told to give acetaminophen, but it hasn't helped, and yesterday she developed a rash on her torso, which prompted the mother to bring the patient in. Review of systems is otherwise unremarkable. Birth history was uncomplicated. No significant past medical history. An older sibling with no medical issues. No medications. That's going to be important. Uh, she's tracking well. Uh, she's up to date on all vaccinations. Blood pressure, 118 over 75. Interesting. That sounds normal, but it's actually high for a child. Heart rate, 125, tachycardic. Respiration, 28. Temperature, she is still febrile at 102.4, and she's satting fine. Okay, what are we going to do for our physical exam? Well, we got to look at the skin, and we find a maculopapular rash on the trunk and on the groin. H-E-N-T. So she's got conjunctival injection bilaterally. So something going on with the eyes, maybe? Auditory canal clear, tympanic membrane normal, oral and pharyngeal mucosa are erythematous. Mild cervical lymphadenopathy and no meningeal signs. Chest, lungs, cardiovascular, abdomen, all normal. Extremities, got to look at these. So you find palmar erythema and desquamation at the fingertips. So not only is this a rash, but it's a rash with desquamation. There's no edema and grossly she's non-focal. Okay. What is our differential? So Kawasaki disease has got to be number one. Anytime you've got a patient coming in with a fever and conjunctival injection, particularly if that conjunctival injection is non-purulent, you need to think about Kawasaki. It's a very important differential because it can be life-threatening. Scarlet fever and acute rheumatic fever, which are uh, manifestations slash sequelae of strep, uh, need to be considered because they're common causes of rash. Stevens-Johnson syndrome, unlikely because they tend to have blisters and usually they have just started a new medication. And then staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome, uh, kind of similar. They tend to have bullae. These, this, this is a, a more comprehensive differential. Okay. So we're going to get a CBC, a BMP, pretty standard. We're going to get a SED rate. And we're going to get a urinalysis. Because she's got that hypertension, uh, we want to see. There's not many things that cause hypertension in children. The big cause is that you're losing protein in the urine. Uh, we're going to get an echo because we're considering Kawasaki. Anytime you're considering Kawasaki, you must get an echo. And then we'll get the strep test just because we're considering um, those uh, two strep-related causes. So what do we find? Well, her, her CBC shows a platelet of 728,000. Okay, Kawasaki tends to do that, it really ramps up your platelet count. Remember that platelets are an acute phase reactant, basically. So when you have severe inflammation, your platelet count will go up. BMP is within normal limits. Said rate, not surprising, it's elevated. Her urinalysis shows sterile pyuria. So there's white blood cells, but no bacteria visualized. And she's got proteinuria. That's probably what's behind her hypertension. The echo shows dilation of the left coronary artery. So pretty much now we have nailed down the diagnosis of Kawasaki. Treatment, IVIG and high-dose aspirin. That is the cornerstone of management for Kawasaki. We got to admit her because we've got to give IVIG and we need to monitor her. We're going to consult PEDS cardiology. We'll follow her sed rate while she's in the hospital. Once she defervesces, we will change to low-dose aspirin, and we can consider discharging, uh, you know, 36 to 50 hours or 60 hours or whatever, day and a half to two and a half days, kind of around there. Um, then we can start considering discharge. Uh, we'll, uh, with our discharge orders, we'll reassure, counsel the family, 
Continue the aspirin, that's gonna be important. I'll tell you how long you continue the aspirin in a little bit. And we need to repeat the echo at about two weeks and about eight weeks. Kawasaki's is an idiopathic acute systemic vasculitis. It's children under the age of five, so if it's a 12-year-old, you're not gonna think Kawasaki's. Uh, it is the most prominent cause of acquired coronary artery disease in children. So it's a clinical diagnosis. You need to get an echo, but echo is not part of the diagnostic criteria. So first of all, they need to have a fever for at least five days. So then they need to satisfy four of these criteria, and there's five of them. They need to have changes to the oral cavity or lips, so that strawberry tongue or fissures of the lips, like cracked lips. A polymorphous rash tends to be maculopapular, but it can be scarlantiform. Bilateral non purulent conjunctivitis, very, very common. You should always think that when you see a child coming in with a rash, a fever, and conjunctivitis. Changes in the extremities, usually erythema or desquamation or both. And then cervical lymphadenopathy. This is the least common, uh, but still occurs in about half of Kawasaki patients. Treatment, IBIG and high-dose aspirin. This is one of the very few times we give a child aspirin. Remember that if you give a child aspirin, for, with, if they have a viral infection, you can precipitate Ray syndrome. Uh, echo is the most important test, as mentioned, because we got to look for those, uh, those dilations of, of the vessels. So we look for aneurysms. Uh, the major complications is coronary artery thrombosis. That's why we give aspirin. They can go on to develop MI. So this is really if it's not treated. So all patients with Kawasaki should be admitted for IVIG, aspirin, and assessment by cardiology. Start the aspirin immediately, then follow the sed rate until it normalizes. Once they defervesce, after a couple days, you can discharge them on low-dose aspirin, and then they will get follow-up echoes at one to two weeks and six to eight weeks, no matter what. They can get additional echocardiography if they continue to remain abnormal, but their echo should normalize at six to eight weeks. Um, so once at six to eight weeks they're normal, then you can stop the aspirin. Even if they're normal at one to two weeks, you still continue the aspirin until the normal echo at six to eight weeks. This is what you'll see. This is kind of a strawberry tongue here. You see the fissures on the lips. Very importantly, the conjunctival injection. And you can see this peeling here it tends to be on the fingers. This is the type of rash that you typically see. This is a maculopapular rash. The, the papules are a little hard to see, but you see one here and here and here. This is the palmar erythema. Be very careful to look out for this because it's common and it's often missed. This is a really prominent strawberry tongue. It looks like she's got a strawberry in her mouth. Okay, so our differential scarlet fever no conjunctival injection, and they'll have a positive strep test. Rheumatic fever, remember your Jones criteria. So they'll tend to have joint pain, erythema marginatum, kind of a different kind of rash. Again, they won't have the conjunctival injection, and they'll have a positive strep test. Stevens-Johnson syndrome, look for a history of a recent upper respiratory tract infection, like mycoplasma, or they started prescription drugs. So Bactrim, Dilantin, Lamictal, Tegretol, so some of those anti-epileptic drugs um, can do it. You've got to slowly titrate them up, especially Lamictal. Uh, Staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome, they tend to, like Stevens-Johnson syndrome, have bullet. You won't see that in Kawasaki. So Kawasaki is an idiopathic systemic vasculitis that mostly affects children under five. Um, you need to diagnose this on clinical grounds. You have to have a fever that lasts more than five days in order to diagnose them. Um, then look for your conjunctival injection. That's really going to tip you off. It'll be bilateral, non-purulent. Look for the strawberry tongue, fissures of the lips, the rash, palmar erythema, maybe some cervical lymphadenopathy tends to be unilateral. Immediate management is to admit them, give them IVIG and high-dose aspirin, consult pediatric cardiology, get the echocardiogram. Most important part of management, aside from treatment, is the echocardiogram. I cannot stress that enough because that's really what we're worried about is the aneurysms and thrombosis of the coronary arteries. Once they've been afebrile for a couple days, switch them to low-dose aspirin, discharge them on the low-dose aspirin, have them follow up with repeat echoes at one to two weeks and six to eight weeks. If they're normal at that six to eight week 
echo, you can, dis, uh, you can discontinue the aspirin. If they're abnormal, they will continue to need repeat echoes.